Hello and a very warm welcome. As enshrined in the new constitution, the rights of the child remains paramount and therefore protecting and promoting these gains remains a key uh, objective that should be embraced with everybody across the board. And that is why today on GBS Dead with Panorama, we are featuring on issues concerning the child. And you know, such issues cannot be easily tackled without bringing on board people like Brown Weke of Credo. That is why we've secured the date with him. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, people might be wondering, who is this Brian Weke? Are you a victim once of child abuse? or? <laughs> um, you know, I grew up in Islands. Yes. And I tell people that in Islands, I can only quit it to a jungle, where the slowest lion has to run faster than the fastest gazelle. <laughs> and the slowest gazelle has to run faster than the fastest lion. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not a victim of violence. However, I have witnessed quite a lot of things during my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I was brought up by my maternal grandmother mm -hmm. who struggled to bring me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. I have seen different things which I can assure you, you have not seen even a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, that has made me develop passion for human rights. It has made me develop passion for women's rights. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it has made me develop the passion of, of the children of this country. Now, it is very interesting. You talk about maybe uh, you coming out of class eight and uh, joining the Matatu industry. It's quite intriguing. We would like to know about that. You, you're now presenting and, and agitating for the rights of people. And once you're a Matatu tout or a driver. Of course, when I started uh, living on my own and started working in the Matatu industry, I made a deliberate choice to ensure that I finish school. Um, it has not been easy, um, but I struggled until I finished uh, Form 4, after which again I ventured into the Matatu business. Mm -hmm. and got a job at Credo as a driver. Mm -hmm. um, but still deep down inside me there was this fire that was burning that said, Brian, it is not enough. You're destined for bigger things. You have to get way much bigger uh, things than this. So I, with my salary, um, I joined the university and got my first degree. Then I was promoted to be the program assistant at Credo. Mm -hmm. Uh, after which, again, I said, Brian, you have to do more, you have to fight for it. Um, then again, I did my master's and uh, I've risen to the position of now uh, the director of programs. Uh, how is the, is the going like working in Credo? Um, honestly, this is what keeps me. Every single day when I wake up and uh, I touch a child's life, Every single day when I wake up and I touch a human being's life, then it moves me. It makes me even stronger. Um, currently, we have dealt with more than 10,000 cases of children who have been abused, and more importantly, the ones who have been sexually abused. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can assure you, we have made great strides in this country. As we speak, uh, you know, a long time ago, if and when a woman and a man gets a child mm. outside wedlock, mm. then the law did not cater for ensuring that the man who has sired a child outside wedlock uh, has full responsibility in terms of maintenance. Um, and we have managed <clears throat> to ensure that uh, currently both a father and a mother, mm. for instance, if today you had sex with a woman, mm. um, outside marriage, then basically the law is very clear that you, you will have parental responsibility on a 50-50 basis. Now we have also been able to draft the, what we call the Sexual Offences Act, which seeks to protect children of this country. And uh, we have very great strides as a country in terms of the law. Mm -hmm. However, still our biggest problem is implementation of these laws. Mm -hmm. Uh, because are you aware that if you are to have sex with a child under the age of 11, you will go in for not less than life imprisonment? Mm -hmm. Now, if we implement these laws, then I can assure you we will be able to deal with the problems that uh, our children are currently facing. As part of our strategy, uh, enlightening the public on what violence constitutes, 
on uh, the rights of the girl child, on the sexual rights of uh, the girl child, is a very key thing for us. Mm. And that's the reason why you've been seeing myself and other cradle uh, members of staff out there mm. trying to enlighten the people of this country that, do you know, not so many people know that just having sex with anybody under the age of 18 is a criminal offense. You hear them saying, ah, we lay have a torture. You hear them saying, look at <coughs> her physique. Uh, she looks like she can consent to sex. Mm -hmm. And she does not only look, people say that she consented to sex. Mm -hmm. People don't know that marrying anybody under the age of 18 is a criminal offense. So we have decided that having law is one thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that law acts as a deterrent measure. Mm -hmm and also as a response mechanism but we want to go out to the public and say and teach them what the law provides for these things we want to teach the public that you cannot possibly marry anybody under the age of 18 just by the mere fact that the parents have accepted mm -hmm. and the child has accepted mm -hmm. because let me tell you even if the child accepted even if the parents accepted you will still go in for a very long time. Uh, and, and in the society, we know that as uh, uh, activists, they are facing a challenge of maybe having their all dedicated time to what they are doing, in that uh, they don't have time for the family. Is it a challenge to you also? Um, as a father, and this is what I've been telling so many people, as a parent and as a father, it is important to understand that you have to create time for your child. And not only create time for your child, but build a serious relationship with your child. If you we were to say like the girl child uh, is now like enjoying massive protection than the boy child, is it true if I were to say that? Uh, that is a misnomer. Mm. Um, it's a misperception actually. Yeah. Um, you understand that according to our culture, we had put a lot of premium on the boy child. Now, even as cradle as we seek to empower the girl child, it does not mean that we leave out the boy child. Because the only way we can also just ensure the empowerment of the girl child is when we empower and ensure that the boy child also empowers the girl child. Now, there is also, and this is a very funny perception, that empowering the girl child or empowering a woman is, it, is disempowering the boy child and disempowering a man. Yeah. No, no, no. That is a fallacy. It's a misnomer. It is uh, untrue completely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Privy to the fact that uh, we could be having some people who are not uh, maybe alive to these changes that are coming in. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, you people who are in the, front, in the, in the child front? Um, as you've seen, we are engaging in a massive campaign. Mm -hmm. And this is not only the cradle, but the entire civil society. And I would want to urge the government to invest heavily in ensuring that people understand these progressive uh, laws that have come up. Because we are very quick to point <coughs> the fact that we have a new constitution, but so many of our people do not understand what is inside there. Now, having a good constitution is one thing, but having an empowered and enlightened populace of this country is another. And the constitution is only as good as the people who can agitate for it. Yes. I know maybe getting more personal into your life, Mr. Branweke. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would like you, you made mention about you having a daughter, but I would like you to maybe broaden further. Are you married? And <laughs> just about your family. <laughs> Married, uh -huh. I am not. Uh -huh. But uh, I am in a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. And hopefully in the next uh, year or two, we will get married. And how about your daughter? Does she know that that is uh, someone who is uh, agitating for the rights of the, of the children? Actually, my daughter Leticia is... Um, She's also an activist uh, because she understands that uh, I fight for the rights of children. Mm -hmm. And even many times, for instance, when people were suffering in Turkana, mm -hmm. my daughter Leticia gave up lunch break for the entire month and said, Daddy, the money you give me for my break, 
Mm. Why don't you send it to Kenyans for Kenya? Mm. And uh, you see, she understands mm. that even at that particular age, mm. she still needs to understand there are people who do not have. Mm. And that is something that I've managed to make her understand. And she's made her decision. So she's a, an activist. Sometimes when she wants to play, she tells me, Daddy. Mm. But I say, no, you cannot go down to play. Mm. She says, Daddy, you know, Playing is part of a child's right, so I tell her it's fine. You win. You can go play. Uh, and, and maybe ten years to come, where do you see the fight for the children going to? Um, I can assure you, we have made great strides. If we have a reformed police that will be able to enforce laws in this country, and I highly feel that we are going to do that. I am seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And you know, the only way we can secure the future of this country is if we protect our children, because they are the future of this country. Mm -hmm. So we have to empower our children because that is the ticket to our future. Mm -hmm. Because we are quick to draft very good pieces of uh, policies, mm -hmm. legislation, legislation mm -hmm. uh, Vision 2030, what vision 2030 if we cannot protect our children? Mm -hmm. Because they are the ones who are going to take the mantle of leadership in this country. this country. If we were not protected, then we would not be where we are. Mm -hmm. And I think it, I want to urge Kenyans, please, it is a high time that you protect the rights of the child. Mm -hmm. You protect children, not only yours, but even the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Not only the neighbors, but even your brothers. Not only your brothers, but even for your sister. Not only for your sister, but even a stranger. It is a high time that we need to get involved. Yeah. It is a high time that we need to come out and protect the interest of this republic, which is actually protecting our children. Yeah, and it's also quite impressive that uh, your leadership role has been also translated into the political arena, whereby we see you lead by an example as a youth rising to leadership as we saw in the Kamkunji constituency case. Mm -hmm. And now there is rumors right about uh, you maybe wanting to be one of the members of parliament in the East African Community Parliament. Is it true? What I've seen consistently happening in this country is that professionals, people who have gone to school, the elites of this nation, the good people of this country, they sit and say, politics is that. They sit and say, these people are not doing good to this country. Mm. But there's a saying that says that evil exists not because of the existence of bad people, but because good people like yourself and myself do nothing. Now the only way we can be able to democratize this country is that the young people of this country need to arise. The great people of this country, like yourself, like myself, the professionals need to get into politics. Uh, the truth is, yes, I, my name is one of the names that will be floated um, to become the member of parliament of East African Legislative Assembly. Um, but there is a lot of politics and we are hoping that these people, we are hoping even for NAC Kenya that they'll give young people of this country a chance to do greater things. Yeah, apart from that, what else are you up to? Um, as Kenya moves along, I will be able to tell the people of this country what we will want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, uh, bigger things that will be able to ensure that our young people are represented at a very high level. Why don't we use our strengths as young people? Why don't we use our numbers to bring one of our very own to leave this country. And we use those old people as our goons, the way they use us. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that is it. Well, thank you very much for having joined us for this very important discussion. Thank you very much, my brother. Well, Bio, we've been speaking to Brian Weke, and I tell you, this man speaks nothing else but the children's right. And for me, my name is Jojo Kachi. See you again next time. <laughs>